password123 everywhere. Welcome to password auditing. What's going on guys? Today I'm going to teach you a little bit of password auditing if you're a domain admin. So at home I don't have a domain controller because I feel there's no reason to have a domain controller in my house. So I can't really do this exactly but I'm going to show you how to do it. So if you're wanting to do a password audit of all your users because you want to know if they've got crappy passwords or not, which I'm going to tell you now they do, this is what you're going to want to do. If you run this command on your domain controller's command line, it's going to create a file or a load of files in the temp directory. You can obviously change this to wherever you want to put it, but from that directory you're going to want to grab the ntds.dit file and the system file because that's what you're going to use to get the password hashes for your users on your domain controller so microsoft are clever i suppose they don't just store passwords in the clear text because that would be silly they put them in hashes so you have to crack them so once you've got the ntds.dit file and the system file that's when you can start cracking the hashes, or gaining the hashes, and then cracking the hashes. So I'm going to pretend I've just run this file, and I'm going to, just don't save that, I'm going to go to my Linux box, and I'm going to pretend that I've just taken my ntds.dit and my system file from my domain controller. Now, we're going to use a tool called Impacket. If you go to the description, that's, uh, there's a link to Impacket for you. And in Impacket, they've got a great module called secretstump.py. And if you put the flag system onto that and then give it the path to your system file and then put ntds, the flag ntds, and then give it the path to your, your ntds file, which is these two here. And then you put user status. That's going to that's gonna show you all the disabled users uh, in those files. Because obviously, if you're doing a password audit, you don't want to really waste time with any disabled users because what's the point of cracking a disabled user's password if you can't use them anyway? So that's what user status does. It shows you if they're enabled or disabled. Local just says, you know, I want to get the local hashes. You're not doing anything remotely. And then you're going to pipe that into a file because, you know, file management, is, it's easier than doing everything in command line, right? So if I just run that, it's not going to take too long because I don't think the, path, the uh, files are that big, but... I mean, to be fair, I don't actually know because I've just taken these files off the internet. They're not my files, so I have no idea what passwords and users I'm going to get out of this. So I've literally just gone on the website and uh, just taken the dot, the dot .dit file, so let, let, let's see how this goes. Okay, so that's done. It looks like this. So we, here are all our users' hashes, usernames, the hash, and if they're enabled or disabled. Then we've got a load of crap up here. You know, we, we can't just give this whole file to a cracking engine like Hashcat because it's gonna not it's not gonna like this stuff up here. So we're gonna have to do some grepping here. So I've made a nice one earlier. So if we less the file that we just made, the NTDS dot out here that we've piped into, we're gonna grep it with the three dots because if you see on the file, every single file line that we want, every hash has those three dots. So that's what we're gonna want. We're then going to grep minus V for status disabled. So the V in grep takes out something from uh, a file. So it's going to take out the disables again because you don't want them. Then we're going to use orc just to print the first lines. So just the hashes basically. It's not going to give you the enabled. So if we do that, it gives you all the hashes. Ta-da! I should have probably pipe that into a file, but... Uh... It's not too hard just to copy them. Okay, so now you've got your users' hashes, you're going to want to actually do the password audit. So download Hashcat. Again, that's in the description. Here's mine. Go to your clipboard and just paste in those hashes there. Uh, choose NTLM because that's what Microsoft's passwords are um, encoded with. Word lists. There's loads of word lists online. If you just type in uh, password cracking dictionaries or password cracking word lists, you'll find some. Uh, probably the most well known is the Rockyou dictionary that's found in Kali Linux. Basically, all they are is just 
as it says on the tin, it's a word list. It's a load of dictionary words in a file or potential passwords. So like Apple, Zebra, you know, computer, things like that um, in these lists. You might want to add a rule. So here is the Rockyou free 30,000 rule. And all that does is just add, say, 21 Apple or Apple 21 rather than just Apple. So it gives you a, a bit more variety of the dictionary words that you're putting in because you know most people probably wouldn't have the password of Apple. They might probably have Apple 123 because of the password complexity and whatnot. But you know, just, just because it will take longer, I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to use these password lists. So I've pasted in my stuff and um, got my word list ready you're all good to go so if you just go that's going to start cracking these hashes if you press s you'll be able to see the status so it'll do that just running through my dictionaries now see how quick this is so how many dictionary files have i got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so i've got ten dictionaries here and that's done already so you know it didn't take that long that probably took about 10 seconds to run 10 dictionaries and straight away it found 21 out of 42 fa 42 passwords so as i said i have no idea what this nts ntds.dit file actually is and the users in it um and that, that cracked it in you know 10 seconds 21 21 users so you know powerful so let's look at the output oh so it's a bit bit high font in it So there you go, you've got a load of passwords here for your users. Which, you know, aren't, aren't that great, to be fair. When it comes to passwords, you, you shouldn't be having just kind of numbers or just uppercase. You can want a mix of uppercase and lowercase, special characters, and make it into a passphrase more more than a uh, more than just a, a dictionary word, you know. So now, if you actually want to see your users, because obviously that's just showing you passwords, you don't know who actually has these crappy passwords in your organization. But if you then go back to your Hashcat, go to Commands, Generate, after the M here, if you just type in dash dash username and run that. 12 seconds later. So uh, you actually have to put dash dash show before dash dash username. For some reason, I'm not, I've not always had to do that on my laptop, so I don't know why I have to do it here. But anyway, so if you run that, go to your output. There you go. So you've got your usernames here, and you've got your passwords here. So now you know who to go in your organization and go, hey, user 14, you have a crappy password. User 14, if that is your real name. Anyway, so that's how you do a password audit, from getting hashes to cracking... That's how it's done. Go go tell your employees off or something. It's been another video by me. Thanks for watching. See you soon.